Ayan po, good morning, no? So, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. So, welcome po to day four. Medyo, ayan. Uh, Mag-review lang po tayo, no? Ayan, kaway-kaway po sa ating mga kasamahan. <laughs> Mag-review lang po tayo. Nung day one, sino po makakasagot? What was the topic po na ating na pag na natalakay nung day one po? Day one, anybody? Uh, you can comment in the chat box po. Patawid Framework po. Yes, Patawid Framework. Okay, from um, Ngalob. Okay. The Patawid Framework. So, syempre, uh, yes, nandun yung pakay, no? Yes, Ma'am uh, Ma Kalusa. Uh, kasama po siya dun sa Patawid. Yung first is yung pakay. And then, uh, ano na yung patawid natin yung patawid framework okay and then uh, nag nag uh, nag discuss din si Ma'am Malin doon ng ating uh, basic ano lang po mga mga yung sa research title ganyan and then selecting yung uh, your topic and then yung yung mga research questions ninyo no so okay so nung day 2 naman uh, we had a speaker from uh, Fort Del Pilar si Ma'am Lilibeth Balutok Okay, so ano po yung kanyang topic na ulit? Yan, active pa po ba tayo dito? <laughs> Kaway-kaway naman po, galaw-galaw, baka ma-stroke. Nako, medyo malamig ngayon, no? <laughs> okay, nung, 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 nung day 2, nagkaroon po tayo ng walkthrough. Research through. design. Yes, ang research design, research methodology po, no? So, nandun ng uh, mga, tin, uh, I mean, ang diniscuss po sa atin ni Ma'am Lilibeth ay yung research designs. So, binigyan niya tayo ng walkthrough. What about yung topic naman po ni Ma'am Jane from Gisad Valley National High School? Topic po ni Ma'am Jane Likod. Walkthrough po ng qualitative and quantitative and code of, code of ethics ng, ng research writing. Wow, okay. Very good talaga si Ma'am Ngalong. Nagte-take notes yan. <laughs> Sampling techniques, data collection, processes, and then yung ethics. And nung Sabado, nandito po ba kayo? Okay, nung Sabado, nung day 3, ay uh, very exciting ang ating discussion ulit with Sir Leo. So ano po kaya ang topic niya nun? Quantitative research po. Ayun, talagang kinabisado ni Ma'am ano, ni Ma'am Ngalob. <laughs> Hi Ma'am Ngalob, okay po. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, so yan quantitative research and now we're moving on to the qualitative naman it's with uh Ma'am Jovi Rose Abuda. King. Aking video. Ayun. So good morning po. I am Jovi Rose Abuda from Pine City National High School, a science teacher and at the same time a TWG po of the division. So nagtataka kayo ano science teacher and then ang i-discuss is qualitative or qualitative. So baka ang isipin natin is dapat siya quantitative kasi nga science. But in research, um, sometimes we just don't study things that we are we are already familiar with, we also try to explore other types of researches. So I hope yung mga nandito po ngayon are the people who will be having their qualitative research. Paris naman po ng hen kung ilan sa atin ang may qualitative research. Oh, si Ma'am Lilibet. Ma'am Kalusa, Ma'am Ma or Sir Ngalub. Ayan, so at least meron po tayo dito mga researchers for the quali. Ayan, so let us start with our learning objectives po. So first is we're going to describe what is qualitative research, um, which is now different with the quantitative research which was discussed by Sir Leo Peter Dacumos. And then we're going to identify the characteristics of qualitative research Again, which is different from quanti. And then, we're going to write a qualitative research proposal. So, I expect that at the end of my session, ayan, kaya maglabas po tayo ng paper, ng pen, or maglabas po tayo ng ating laptop, because as I go through my discussion, um, I will be expecting that you will already be writing your research proposal, kasi ang topic ko po is writing the qualitative research. So, I'll give you po three minutes to prepare your pen and paper or to open your 
laptop sa my word or sa, sa notes para we can start writing po. So I'll give you po three minutes. Ayan. So, we start po. So, first, what is qualitative research? So, when we say qualitative research, it means any type of research that produces findings not arrived at by any statistical procedures or other means of quantification. So, this time, kakalimutan muna natin yung pinag-aralan natin kay Sir Peter. Isasantabi muna natin. So, wag muna si... Mean, median, mode, and then yung T-test, yung um, Pearson product correlation. So, wala muna siya sa qualitative research. Why? Because qualitative research is actually non-numerical in data. So, yung mga ayaw kay math at galit kay math, I think we can have this qualitative research. And then, usually, qualitative research is used in the human sciences and social sciences. So maybe in our college years, ang mga gumagawa ng ating qualitative research is yung ating mga um, araling panlipunan teachers, ESP teachers, English and Filipino teachers kasi they have a play of words. Kumbaga kasi pag sa science and math, sometimes we, are, we stick talaga doon sa numbers, quantities, kasi ngayon yung ating training. And then... At the same time, qualitative research is inductive in nature, which means that we move from specific observation about individual phenomenon to broader generalization and theories. So una, we start with an observation. So we can choose a certain person, a group of people, or kaya a group of community, and then we start with our observation. And then from our observation, anong gagawin natin? At the end of our study, we're going to have now what we call a generalization or a theory. So why is it good to conduct also qualitative research? It is good to conduct qualitative research because the um, yung people's lives is very rich. So I repeat po. Why conduct qualitative research? Because of the richness of people's everyday lives. So yan po yung tinatawag nating qualitative research, which is so different with quantitative because in quantitative, we focus more on the numbers, on the data. Are we going to accept or are we going to reject the hypothesis? In qualitative, we have to deal with people, we have to deal with a person, we have to deal with a community, or even their behavior, yung kanilang context. So let us continue po. So what are the features of qualitative research? It studies the meaning of people's lives in their real world roles. So as a researcher, we have to be immersed in their community Sino ba sila sa kanilang community? So, it's real world, meaning there's no role playing. Hindi pwedeng, ay, ito yung pipiliin kong participant. And then yung participant na yun is just acting. Hindi niya pinapakita yung totoo niyang behavior. That is not qualitative. Kasi in qualitative, role playing is not allowed. So, there should be what we call as a naturalistic inquiry. Bakit po siya naturalistic inquiry? Because it studies a group in its natural setting. Aside from that, it, it is now representing the views and perspective of the people. Explicitly attending to and accounting for real world contextual conditions, contributing insights from existing or new concepts that may help social behavior, and acknowledging also multiple resources. So aside from that, yung ating researcher, kung tayo po ang magre-research, I repeat, we should, we should be immersed in the group. Meaning, we can be an insider, we can be a part of the group, 
a part of the community or we can be an outsider meaning we observe from the outside kasi especially for indigenous peoples group pag if you are an outsider i think we have to ask certain permission before we can go into the community so usually pag mga indigenous practices sometimes yung ating mga researchers are only outsiders ibig sabihin they observe outside of the community siguro mas ma-explain ito ng ating mga araling panlipunan teachers kasi they know more about yung sa rules ng indigenous people and then <clears throat> It is not concerned with a right or wrong answer because the mistakes has to gain um, a perspective. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya katulad ng kwantina. This is the value. Excuse me po, ah, sandali lang. I'll just get some water. Ayan. Sorry po kasi <laughs> hindi tayo nag-face to face kaya limited po yung ano natin na nagsasalita. So again, I repeat, um, ang qualitative po, it is not concerned with a right or wrong answer. Huwag mong sabihin na, ay, that is not ethical. That cannot be the answer. Hindi pwedeng ito yung ilalabas ko sa aking research. There is no right or wrong answer. Kasi when we are doing qualitative research, we have to acknowledge their perspective we have to acknowledge their belief. So, yun po yung paniniwala nila. Then, when we present it in our research, yun po talaga dapat yung lalabas. Hindi siya pwedeng i-sugarcoat, hindi siya pwedeng i- um, kumbaga, yung parang MTRCB na I am going to cut this part kasi hindi siya maganda. So, for qualitative research, it should be naturalistic po talaga. We have to deal in the natural setting. Kindly raise your hand lang po if there are questions or if you want to input something. Um, maganda kasi siya for discussion ang ating qualitative research. Okay, let's continue po. Um, what are the functions of qualitative research? Number one, it's contextual. Meaning, it's describing the form or nature of what exists. I will give an example po para yung mga susunod po, maybe later on you can have your research on this one or parang magkaroon kayo ng idea kung ano ba yung mga pwede natin research that is contextual in nature. Um, have you heard po yung tinatawag nilang Me Too movement? Sino po ang nakarinig na ng ating Me Too movement? You can unmute po your mic. That is ma'am. Oh. Ano po yung Me Too movement, ma'am? Oh. Anybody po? Nagbabasa pa ho ba tayo ng news? What is the hashtag Me Too movement? Usong-uso po siya ngayon. Sikat na sikat siya. Okay. So ang Me Too movement, it is actually a movement that is now publicizing sexual abuses. Meaning, um, if a certain person was sexually abused, they publicize it, sinasabi nila na itong tao na to, he made a sexual assault on me. Bakit siya ulit nagtitrending ngayon? Bakit nagtitrending po si hashtag me to movement? It is because um, yung ating tennis star player na si Peng Chui, um, he, I, she, I'm sorry, she accused si um, Gao Li, a former top communist politician doon sa China. So, if it's contextual, if you want to study the movement, pero wala siyang movement pa sa Pilipinas, ang meron sa Pilipinas is hashtag babae ako. So, pwede nating pag-aralan yun. Why is that movement existing? So, yun po yung tinatawag nating context contextual na qualitative research. So you can think, bakit kaya merong tinatawag na 
hashtag MeTooMovement or hashtag BabaeAkoMovement. Why? Ayan. So, pwede natin siyang i-relate sa tinatawag nating BAUSI. Diba po? Kasi meron pa rin tinatawag na violence sa babae at sa children. Number two is explanatory. Examining the reasons for or associations between and then what exists. Example of explanatory is, pwede po nating i-research ano ba yung tinatawag nilang Inayan culture. May ask somebody po, what is the Inayan culture? Parang nakita ko si Ma'am Bantas. Ma'am Bantas? Sir Ferry, may kausap pa ba ako dito? Yeah, yes ma, medyo ano lang yata. <laughs> Anybody po from the group? Sino po ang may alam ng Inayan culture? I think this is from Benguet po ba? Ayan. Uh, good morning ma'am. Yes ma'am, good morning po. Opo, um, um, yung Inayan culture po natin dito sa Cordillera, uh, because that's also one of the researches of my husband, Wow. Um, yung inayan is I think a restrictive word na ginagamit natin para din uh, ma-restrict tayo from doing what is wrong and para siyang para natin siyang ginagamit for ano eh, parang uh, to make sure that we are still doing the right thing Ganyan, in a community. So when we say inayan, it is basically talking about um, a restriction a word that we use as uh, a restrictive word para sa ganon magawa pa rin natin what is right. And thank you, ma'am. So at least, ma'am, yung husband nyo po did a qualitative research on Inayan culture? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes po. I <laughs> think it was... Also... Sample, si ma <laughs> Opa. <laughs> it was already published, uh, ma'am. It was it was actually uh, para pong if I'm not mistaken ma'am uh, kwan po yata siya na na approve siya ng BERF. Um, he presented in the region uh, yung yung ano na yon yung word na inayan uh, but that is in the context of Igawa Igawa Basaw Mountain Province naman Ay okay ma'am so yung inayan is actually cordilleran po siya hindi po siya specific na sa province lang po ng Benguet ma'am parang ganun Oh, oh yes ma'am, yes ma'am. It's uh, basically used uh, widely dito sa Cordillera region. But um sa 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 ginawa kasi niya, it is in the context naman of Basaw Mountain Province. Ganyan so parang may historical account siya and uh, other uh, other phenom uh, par parang phenomenology kasi yung ginawa din niya ma'am eh. Ganyan. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. And then from Ma'am Ganado, sabi din po niya, in Lion Culture, parang karma is real. Parang if you do bad, it comes back to you. Parang ganun din po yung kanyang ano. So may nag-aral na ng inayan Culture, but in the context of Bisaw, if you want to deal more of this one, pwede rin siya sa ibang context. Kasi baka magkakaiba naman yung kanilang explanation why they have this culture and how do they manifest this culture in their daily life. Ayan po. Next one is evaluative, meaning it is appraising the effectiveness of what exists. So, punta muna tayo sa politika. Anong kulay po tayo ngayon? Unmute your mic. Sabay-sabay po tayo. Anong kulay po kayo? Red. Red. <laughs> Red. Wala akong narinig na kulay na iba. Ayan, Wala so, pink? walang pink. <laughs> oh, kasi ang i-discuss ko is pink. Okay. For evaluative, though we are a political po as a DEPE, dapat daw po wag tayong um, masyado sa politics, di ba? Kasi nga, we are the ones who are serving in the COMELEC. So, for instance, gusto mong, kunwari, manalo si, halimbawa, manalo po si ating um, Lenny Robredo, ang ina ng ating bayan, and then magkakaroon na ng... Um, ng color, di ba? From yung yellow tarred, nagkakaroon na ng tinatawag natin pink. So, for qualitative, since we are in depth, we notice na marami sa ating mga leaders 
ang babae. So for evaluative, ano kaya yung pwede natin pag-aralan sa evaluative? Maybe we can have what we call as pink leadership. Kasi nga, kunwari, mananalo si Lenny. So ang kanyang kinagamit na kulay is pink, and then napansin mo na maraming babaeng leaders, then you can um, discuss in your study, ano ba yung tinatawag nilang pink leadership? Ano ba yung itsura ng isang pink leader? When we say pink, babae. Di ba po? So, for Robredo, she is using the hot pink color. Um, sabi nila sa psychology, pink daw kasi means softness, kindness. Pero the hot pink means being bold. Ayan. Sabi din sa psychology, ang pink daw sa babae is a weak color. It's like saying blue for boys is a weak color. So bakit kaya pink ang ginamit ni Lenny? So you can have that one later on po. So pwede natin siyang study, ev evaluate. Is it um, good to have what we call as pink leadership? Yan. So sino po yung mga participants natin? Pwede po natin i-gather yung ating mga principals na babae kung marami ang principal na babae sa Division of Baguio o yung ating mga matataas na opisyal sa Baguio. Marami po tayo. And then next one is generative, aiding the development of theories, strategies, or actions. Um, one example of a generative research is yung pinatawag nila ngayong creative leadership. Meron po yata tayo mga principals dito. Ayan, si Ma'am Lilibet. Um, Ma'am Lilibet, ano po ang ating leadership style? Uh, leadership style? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ako, democratic. Tayo po ba ay authoritarian? Lazy fair? Parang uh, more of a democratic. Ah, wow. More of democratic. Ayan. Oh, I see it. Yes, ma'am. Kasi depende dun sa tumitingin. Ano, ma'am? Yes. <laughs> Ayan. <laughs> Thank you, Ma'am Lilibet. So, yung sinabi ni Ma'am na parang democratic, that is more of what we call as parang creative leadership. Ano po ba yung tinatawag nilang creative leadership? That is the concept of working cooperatively to develop innovative ideas and solution. And if you deal with creative leadership, napaka-konti po ng ating literature. That means hindi siya masyadong napag-aaralan. Kasi um, mostly na napag-aaralan na type of leadership is the lazy pair. We also have the authoritarian um, leadership. So if you want to deal more on this one, maybe we can look into the um, principles na sino ba sa kanila yung mayroong tinatawag natin creative leadership. At pag may creative leadership ba, ano ba yung effect nito sa teachers? Anong effect nito sa... Um, teaching learning sa kanilang performance, academic performance. Is it good? Maganda kaya ang environment in that school if the leader has what we call creativity. Um, do we have any question po for this part or do we have any input? Ayan, so kahit paano po, sana nakakaisip na po tayo ng topic na magandang pag-aralan as we discuss this one. Okay, next po. This is the problem with chair screen na buo. Naghang na po siya. Yan po ma'am, nag-move na po. And so we have here what we call as the methodological stances associated with qualitative research. So we have six stances. Number one is the perspective of the researcher in the research. So as a researcher po, 
Um, we cannot remove yung tinatawag nating biases or prejudices na prejudice, prejudice tayo. Meron tayong nakikita na pag nakita natin yung batang ito, pag pumapos, pumasok pa lang siya sa klase ni, ni, natin at narinig natin yung apelyedo, halimbawa Lopez, sometimes sasabihin natin ay na Lopez manan. Isumanin dyan yung umanabsent, isumanin dyan nagbababati grades na. Yun po yung tinatawag natin meron na tayong bias. So, kunwari, Lopez yon. what do we do? We can research on the child. Bakit kaya yung mga Lopez ganun? Bakit kaya sila mahina academically? Bakit kaya sila laging nag-absent? So, ganun po yung tinatawag nating perspective. So, as a researcher, dapat po we have to remove our biases. Tanggalin po natin yung bias natin pag nag-start na po tayo ng research. Because when we have biases, it will affect the conduct of our research and it will also affect the result of our research. Baka ang gusto lang natin ipalabas is yung gusto nating ipalabas, which is not actually found in the setting of that um, yung person that we are being researching, that we are researching to. And then, the research or yung tinatawag nating participant. So, in a quantitative research, ang tawag po natin sa ating mga kasali sa research, ang tawag natin doon ay respondents. But for a qualitative research, we call them as the participants. And we as a researcher is also a participant din po tayo sa research. So, the participant is special. Every participant is special and they deserve an in-depth attention. So kung meron tayong, halimbawa, meron tayong limang participants in our research, each of them is special. And then each of them, kung kinakausap mo ng 30 minutes, kakausapin dapat each ng 30 minutes. Dapat hindi po tayo pwedeng, ay, hindi mo nakatatuntong dahil ito yung uh, participant ikat kun day quasi interview so it should not be because we have to know note that each of these participant is special and each of the participant will give us a view of their natural setting number 2 is the nature of the research design so for the research design we should employ what we call as triangulation Pag sinabi po natin triangulation, we have to use as many gathering tools to find a common band. Halimbawa, um, I'm going to have a case study of a child who is, uh, kunwari, meron siyang learning disability. When I'm going to study the child na merong learning disability or halimbawa meron siyang, kunwari, ADHD, we have to employ triangulation. Ano yung mga triangulation na pwede natin gawin? We can interview the child and then from the interview of the child, we don't stop there. Kasi sometimes, yung participant will not tell us every, everything that we want to get. Sometimes, meron silang tinatago, meron silang pinoprotect, kaya they don't want to tell or divulge it to us especially if our research is short-term, meaning hindi pa natin nakuha yung kanilang trust. So what do we do? Aside from interviewing, we can do what we call as observation. So maybe during recess, you can sit in the quadrangle and then try to observe anong ginagawa ng ating estudyante during research. And then we can also interview the parents. We can also interview the friends. And then we can also look at yung kanyang anecdotal records sa guidance office. So yun po yung tinatawag natin triangulation para when we do the triangulation, we will see the common band. Ano ba yung pare-pareho na nag-appear? Para masabi natin na ah, ganito pala talaga yung batang ito. Kasi ginamit na natin lahat yung based on how to gather the data. Number three is the nature of data generation. The nature of data generation in a quality research is actually very tedious. 
Kasi from an interview, it's either we have to write it or kung meron naman tayong recorder, we can record it. And then after that one, anong ginagawa natin? After writing, after recording, we have to encode it again verb, um, verbatimly. So, dapat kung ano yung sinabi niya, kung nagmura siya, isulat mo lahat yon Kung nag-post siya, isusulat mo doon. So, everything, verbatimly. And then, from there, anong gagawin natin? We have to highlight yung commonality. And then, when we highlight now the commonality, itignan na naman natin yung ibang participant. Ganun na naman yung step. What do we do? We interview, we write, we record, we encode, we highlight, and then at the end, we look at the commonality of these participants. Ano yung pare-pareho sila before we can arrive at what we call as a generalization. So it's actually deduce. And then number four, the nature of the research methods used. So qualitative aims to understand the surrounding capture experiences, and make sense out of it. So, yan po ang kanyang nature. So, if the child has a learning disability, so what? Ano ba yung gusto nating palabasin? Meron ba tayong gustong lesson learned na gustong ipalabas for other children to, when they read the research, meron silang matututunan sa batang ito? Ayan po yung tinatawag nating nature. And then the nature of analysis and interpretation. So, meron po tayong tinatawag na um, steps that we have to follow when we interpret a data. Hindi pwedeng sa isang interview lang sa isang bata, ay that's it. Sometimes, we have to be sure na yung kanyang trust sa atin is nandoon na para yung ating interview should be a totality of the child na hindi lang once, hindi lang twice. Sometimes the interview should be more than para at least while we go on, mas lumalabas yung gusto natin hanapin sa ating qualitative research. So it's actually tedious. And then the nature of output, kahit na anong lumabas ko sa qualitative research, the data will always be useful. Pero ang sabi nila for qualitative, um, we don't actually use the word data. Instead, ang hinahanap po natin at the qualitative research point of view is what we call as constructs or concepts. So kung ano man po ang lalabas, it's always useful kasi it will now add up to literature. Ayan. Do we have any questions po? Okay. Ayan. So those are the methodolog methodolog methodological stance associated with qualitative research. Next one po. Ayan. Getting to, getting ready to do qualitative research. So yung mga may qualitative research po, ito po yung kailangan natin. Number one. We should have what we call as personal attributes in doing field-based research. Ikaw po ba yung researcher na you can go out of your way, you can go to the community, you can do talk to the people in the community that you want to research to. Ikaw po ba yung um, researcher na you can go for home visitation para makita mo yung context ng iyong learner. Ikaw po ba yung researcher na masipag mag-interview, masipag magsulat, masipag mag-tanong-tanong, uh, and then mag-observe. Those are personal attributes that are very important in field-based research. Bakit po siya tinatawag na field-based? Kasi yung sabi nga natin kanina, ang quali, we have to go to the natural setting. Hindi po siya katulad ng experimental na I'm going to take this variable, I'm going to place this in the laboratory, and then I'm going to observe it in the laboratory. Hindi po pwede yun. Sa qualitative research, their natural context is the place that we're going to go to 
doon natin siya i-observe. Hindi natin siya pwedeng hiwalay itong bata sa kanyang community. Ililipat natin siya sa ibang community tapos doon natin siya i-observe. Hindi po yun pwede sa qualitative. So, ano po ang ginagawa natin? Dapat tayo po na researcher, tayo po yung mag i sa kanilang community. Tayo po yung pupunta sa kanilang community, tayo yung mag observe So, kung ang gusto mong pag-aralan ay grupo ng mga batang laging nag absent grupo ng mga batang nag absent you go to their natural setting. Maybe in the quadrangle, they are together. Doon ka mag-observe. Hindi pwedeng dalhin mo sila sa guidance office and then doon natin sila i-observe. So, our personal attributes are very important in doing field-based research in quali. Number two, we should be able to manage our field-based research. Since um, quali is a bit tedious talaga, so we have, um, we have what we call as our Gantt chart. So, sa inyo pong research proposal, magkakaroon po tayo doon ng Gantt chart. So, at least doon po sa ating Gantt chart, ilalagay na natin kailan tayo pupunta, kailan tayo mag-o-observe, kailan tayo mag interview So, we have to write the specific specifics. Number three, we acknowledge our research lens. Pag sinabi po natin research lens, what is our focus? But then again, when we are having qualitative research, sometimes yung ating research topic is deviating or sometimes yung ating research question is deviating. So we have to acknowledge that. Bakit kaya nagde-deviate? Maybe it's because of our bias kasi na ito lang yung alam natin. Kung baga para yung sa kabayo na meron siyang um, blind spot na we don't see na meron palang ganito in that person, in that community, in that group of people. So we have to acknowledge that na sometimes we have to deviate kasi nga hindi lang pala yun yung um, na part ng kanilang community. Next one, we have to set and maintain ethical standards for conduct. Ayan, so everything, yung sa discussion po siguro ni Ma'am Jane, na-discuss na po niya yan na dapat yung ating ethical standards in conducting research should always be observed. Especially if we are doing research na involves children. Kailangan po ng parental consent. Hindi po pwedeng in-interview um jaubing na awan ti parental consent. And then we have to explain to them, why am I doing my study? Bakit ikaw yung pinili ko? So, dapat nandoon yung parent, nandoon yung guardian when we do this one. In IP communities, again, I repeat po, we have to, since that community is exclusive, we have to ask permission. Hindi po agad-agad pwedeng pumasok pa sa community nila we have to ask a permission. I do not know po kung saan sila nag ask ng permission. In one of the research congress before in the region, meron pong nag-present ng ganito sa IP community. So sinabi nga po niya na when you do daw IP research, parang magastos kasi meron daw po kayong babayaran sa isang, I don't know what, I cannot remember yung institution that you have to pay para you can conduct your research. And then, when you go to the community, sasamahan ka nila sa community. So, hindi daw po pwede na just you enter in that community. Tama po ba? Ang ating mga AP teachers, ganun po ba ang ating IP community? Sana nandito si Ma'am ano no? si Ma Loida, who can speak, she can speak more of this one. And then number five, we should protect human subjects. So again, we should obtain an approval from an IRB, yung Institutional Review Board. But in the division, wala naman yata tayong IRB, kaya ang ginagawa na lang ni Ma'am Katsoyan is hinahanap nila yung mga parents waiver, hinahanap nila yung mga ethical standards kung nakalagay yung sa ating researches kasi wala naman tayong IRB. But I think for some institutions like big universities, meron po silang IRB para po makita talaga that our participants are protected during 
um, before, during, and even after the research when our um, research is already presented in the community. Ayan po. Next one. So how do we start a qualitative research? Number one is we should define something to study. Ano po ba yung gusto nating study? Um, do we want to study a certain person? Siya ba yung laging nagbibigay ng problema sa ating classroom? Ano po yung problema ng bata? Is it absenteeism? Is it tardiness? Or katulad yung problema natin ngayon na hindi ginagawa ang performance task? Number two, we have to collect relevant data. So before we start a qualitative research, dapat meron na tayong mga um, data that we can already use. So ano ba yung karakteristik pag grupo ito ng mga bata? Ano yung, ano yung common karakteristik before we can include them in the research? Are they all boys? Are they 13 years old? Um, do they belong to a big family or a small family? So, dapat meron na tayong idea para ano ba yung commonality nila so that we can include them in the research. Pag batang babae ba na iisang anak, isasali ko ba siya sa research ko? Maybe, ay, no, hindi yata pwede. Kasi nga, ang hinahanap ko is lalaki na kabilang sa malaking pamilya. Number three, how are we going to analyze and interpret the results? So, dapat meron na tayong plano paano natin um, kukolektahin. Mag-interview ba tayo? Mag-home visitation ba tayo? Pupunta ba tayo sa guidance para kunin yung kanilang mga anecdotal records? Or pupunta ba tayo sa DSWD para kasi sila yung mga four piece maybe? And then number four, we have to draw conclusions based on the empirical findings. So, Ano yung gusto nating ipalabas at the end of the research? Is it a generalization? Is it a theory? Is it a lesson learned? Ayan. So dapat meron na po tayong idea para when we do the research, at least meron tayong direction when we do qualitative research. Ayan. So what are the three goals for starting up? Number one is what we call as topic. What are you going to study? So, ilista mo na kung ano yung mga possible topics that you like to study. Are you going to study about vandalism in high school? Are you going to study about um, pregnancy sa senior high school? Are we going to study substance abuse? Though parang... Nakakatakot pag-aralan ang substance abuse in high school. And then, number two, data collection method. So, how are you going to collect the data? Pag kunwari, pag um, pregnancy, early pregnancy, which I think was studied by Sir um, Sherwin. So, yung mga mothers na, mga batang mothers sa high school, sa open high. So, paano kaya niya kinolek yung data niya? Um, were the participants really willing to be interviewed? Kasi nga, ma-identify sila, di ba? But of course, meron tinatawag na anonymity. And then the source of the data, saan mo kukolektahin yung data? Is it available? Nasa school ba lahat ng data? Do we, I need to go to their houses? Do I need to go to their barangay? Para makita ko yung kanilang setting. So, before you proceed to qualitative, isipin natin, number one, I repeat, topic. Number two is the method. And number three is the source of data. So, number one is identifying what we call as a topic of inquiry. So, when we do identifying a topic of inquiry, ito yung mga pwede nating pag-aralan. Number one, it can only be one person. Pwedeng isang tao lang yung gusto mong pag-aralan. Or group of people. <clears throat> Mas marami. Pwede ring two or more. An event. Pwede din po nating pag-aralan yung event. Number four, an organization. So pwede rin pong pag-aralan yun. So for an individual, pag sinabi natin individual, 
pwede mo lang pag-aralan yung isang tao. Ano ba yung nakita mo sa tao na yun, which you think is very um, unique to that person? So, yun yung i-consider natin. Ano yung meron sa kanya? And then, pag group of people, group of people naman, titignan mo ano yung meron sa kanila naman na parang common din sa kanila. And then, events. So, what is the common, again, in those events? And then, organization. Kunwari, you want to look at the culture of a certain school. Pag sinabi natin, culture of a certain school, bakit itong school na to is a um, school of excellence? What is the culture of excellence in that school? Kunwari, kunwari ang school natin organization is Central, Baguio Central School. Why are they most awarded? So maybe we can study their culture of excellence. So when you study yung tinatawag natin culture of excellence, that's already qualitative. Ayan. Um, may I have a raise of hand po? Ilan po sa atin ang magkakaroon ng research about an individual? Ayan. Wow. Um, group of people. Ayan. <clears throat> Nakita ko na kay Ma'am Agabaw. Sabi niya, yung nursing mothers na students. So, you can study them po. They can be um, individual. So, pwede sila. So, marami na sa senior high ang ating nursing mothers. And then, also events. Yan. Meron kayang mag-study ng events sa atin. I think mostly sa atin kasi ang pinag-aaralan natin is an individual, pwede siyang case study or even group of people. Um, events and organizations, we can also do that one po. <clears throat> Ayan, so I hope I am giving you idea kung ano po yung pwede nating pag-aralan in our research. So marami po siya actually. We just have to be observant and we think of <clears throat> yung ating mga similar commonalities, our differences, our uniqueness. And then from there, makikita po natin na ang dami-dami palang pwedeng pag-aralan. Yung kunwari, meron kang kasama na outstanding. Bakit siya outstanding? Bakit siya best teacher? Ano ang meron sa kanya? So you can study. Bakit siya pag ano ang dami niyang innovation? Ano kaya ang meron sa kanya? Gusto mo siyang pag-aralan? Pwede mo siyang pag-aralan para she can be a source also of inspiration to other people na she is innovative. Bakit siya innovative? Kasi baka meron siyang mga experiences um, that made her to be that kind of person now. Bakit siya innovative? Bakit siya creative? Ayan. <clears throat> Next po. Ayan. So we will start na po with the title. Um, I want you po to start bringing out your paper and your pen kasi at the end of my presentation po, pipituran nyo po yung inyong output, isisend nyo kay Sir ano, Alejandro <laughs> para meron po tayong output. Kasi I want po na at the end of my session, meron na po tayong outline para pagkatapos po para during your asynchronous, gagawin na lang natin siyang paragraph form para hindi po tayo mahirapan. Okay po ba? Ayan. So, number one, the title. We'll start with the title kasi yun ang pinakauna talaga. For a project proposal, for the title, we have what we call as a working title. Kasi sinabi po natin working title, when it goes to the division office, sometimes pinapapalit po nila yung title kasi parang they think this one is more appropriate. Pag tinignan nila yung yung totality ng proposal mo, parang mas maganda yata ito. Kaya, tinatawag po natin working title. It means pwede siyang magbago. So, the title is very important because it will now take into consideration what is the content of our research in just a few words. So, it will encapsulate ano ba yung laman ng research natin. Pag nakita mo yung title na yun, ay, ito yun. And then number two, it should capture the reader's attention. 
And then, at most, sa ating um, research manual, dapat po 12 words lang. Unlike in quantitative research, pag quantitative po kasi, um, sa research natin, laging nandoon si dependent and independent variable. But for qualitative research, we can be more um, creative in making our titles. So example po ng mga qualitative research, example po ito yung nakita ko, Mangyan Courtship Dance, a Lost Tradition. Nawawala rin na rin po ba ang ating um, kankanae language? Language po ba ang tawag doon? Kankanae, mapukukaw ba ti kankanae? Is yung agam MTB tayo? Ayan. So baka kung nawawala na, dahil ang ating mga bata ay instead of kankanae, instead of ilokano, ang tinuro natin ay English. Is our language getting lost? Ayan, pwede po nating pag-aralan. Number two, the struggles of senior high school. Ayan. So maybe kaila Ma'am Erlinda, dahil nag-ano siya ng nursing mother, baka pwede na lang ilagay dito the um, struggles of a nursing mother sa senior high school. And then General Luna, a worthy leader. Ayan, meron pa palang practices in breastfeeding. Ayan. Peer pressure in school, is it a make or a break? Multiple intelligence among kids, an exploratory case. Sibling rivalry, ay maganda rin ito. Sibling rivalry for maternal and paternal attention. So ibig sabihin, yung magkakapatid nag-aaway kasi they want to get the attention of the mother and the father. Ayan. Factors of unemployment in Lapu-Lapu City. Ayan. So, these are some titles. Again po, we can be creative in making our title. Ayan. Saan ko po ginamit yung aking title? I repeat po, I am a science teacher. So, parang ang aking forte po is more on the quantitative. Pero, I tried doing a research po on qualitative. My title po is... Um, entitled um, Graffiti, Public Art, or Vandalism. So, ano po ang ginawa ko? Since baguhan po ako sa research, what I did was I identified yung mga key terms sa aking research. Ang mga key terms po sa aking research is Graffiti, Public Art, and then Vandalism. And then, ano po ang next na ginawa ko? I made a column for definition. Pero this was kasi ano, matagal na po ito kaya hindi ko na mahanap yung original. But for the definition, I got the definition from pwede siyang kunin sa um, dictionary or mas maganda po galing sa researches yung definition ng inyong words. Ayan, example, graffiti. It is illegal. It involves the destruction of property. Pero another definition is that it can express any attitude or feeling. What is public art? The best way for people to express themselves in the city. With permission, traditional painted graffiti is technically considered public art. So yung mga ginawa ko nila sa may Harrison doon sa, um, sa an, anong building na po yun, yung merong mga graffiti that is considered public art. Bakit? Kasi meron siyang permission. So sabi ng city government, since marami naman tayong graffiti, gawin na natin siyang public art. So, pinaint po nila yung kanilang mga um, doors ng graffiti. Those are graffiti po. And then, without permission, ang tawag doon ay vandalism. So, from the definition, ano pong ginawa ko na next? <clears throat> I made what we call questions. So yung mga questions po na ito, ito na po yung gagamitin ko sa interview guide. Kasi nga hindi pa ako gamay sa paggawa ng quali. So at least kahit paano, when I did this one, it made uh, me make the questions at least easier and then parang nasa focus ako, hindi ako nawawala. So when we make questions, we see to it that it is open-ended and then... Um, wala po yung answerable by yes or no. So yan, katulad nyan, ako mismo meron akong bias sa graffiti. 
I think it is vandalism kasi maduming tinan. So, anong ginawa ko? Tinanggal ko yung bias ko na na vandalism lang kaya meron akong tinatawag na public art. So, these are already my questions. So, what do you think of graffiti? How do you see paintings and carvings on the wall in public places? Do you consider them, them beautiful? Ang tinatanong ko po dito ay mga graffiti artists, mga estudyante. Ang tawag ko po sa kanila ay graffiti artists, hindi po sila vandals. Kung sa school ang tawag natin ay vandals, sa aking research po ang tawag ko sa kanila ay graffiti artist kasi pag sinabi kong vandals um, ano na yon parang tinag ko na sila na vandals talaga that means i don't look at their work as an art puro vandalism ayan and then i even ask them do you make graffiti on existing graffiti and it's good to hear na kahit pala mga vandals man ang tawag natin sila it is good that during my research I was able to find out na they don't put that one na pag meron ng existing graffiti, huwag mong papatungan ang graffiti ng iba. And then, vandalism. Since vandalism ang tingin ko doon, ano yung question ko about vandalism? What do you think are the positive consequences brought about by making graffiti? And what do you think are the negative consequences? So sila yung mag-identify. What are the positive and then what are the negative? Para at least yung mga bata mismo, nakikita nila na merong positive siguro yung ginagawa nila, which is a mode of self-expression. And then merong negative kasi nakakasigira din siya ng properties. So, yan po sa mga bago pa lang na mag-qualitative research, you can do this one po para at least nakafocus po tayo. And then itong interview guide na ito, ito na rin po yung gagamitin natin for... Um, the interview part when we do collection of our data. And then, for the first activity po on your paper, I want you to use your working title, define the terms, preferably from researches, and then formulate open-ended questions. Ayan po. So, um, the time po is 9.38, um, I will give you po at least siguro um, for the question, kung meron po kayong tatlong terms, kahit tatlo lang po na open-ended question and then you can add up po later kung meron pang time. Yung definition, for now, you can use the dictionary at dahil hindi tayo, wala tayong open resources muna ng ating mga researches, so yun muna ang gagamitin natin. So ulitin ko po number one, you, with your working title po, identify the key terms. Ano yung, yung terms? And then each term, we define it. And then each term, we have to formulate one question. Um, the time is 9.40 in my clock po. I will give you um, five minutes po. Kaya po ba ang five minutes? Um, five minutes to work on this one, please write it po on your paper. Ayan, ready? Um, five minutes po starts now.
Ayan po. Maybe we can have some po to give us their title, their working title. Anybody po? Yung meron pong qualitative. Ma'am Erlinda, ikaw nga ang mag-umpisa at meron kang ano, you are thinking of the um, nursing mothers in the senior high. Ano po yung ating working title lang? Uh, inaisip ngayon namin kasi group kami dito, tatlo kami. We discussed last time. Parang uh, uh, napansin ngayon namin kasi na sa during the deliberations, no, sila nga yung walang mga outputs ganon. And then we found out na mga kapapanganak pala itong mga estudyante ito na nagpapadede ganon. So we have actually four in, in senior high. So we, nung nag-uusap kami, try nga natin kung ano yung parang iniisip namin na title is yung coping mechanism. Okay. Pwede kaya yun? Yes, coping so... mechanism of um, nursing mothers in the senior high school. Parang ganon yung nasa isip namin mga. And so, coping mechanism of senior high school nursing mothers. Kasi mothers. sila yung mga nagpapadete, kapapanganak as in na, na that they are trying their best to finish their outputs yet may baby sila. Parang ganun. <laughs> and so, parang nakita natin, ano, apat lang po yun, pero pwede na po yung apat. Hindi po kailangan na alam, masapul ko at adu at ubing at paspaso. So, hindi po kailangan na ang dami-dami. Yung apat na yun, pwede na po silang maging participant sa ating study. Ah, so, yes, yes. So, yun din. So, from there, ma'am, ma'am Erlinda, um, what are the key terms in your research? Key terms? Yes, ma'am. Sa title nyo. Um, sa amin is... Uh, During our discussion, we try ngay to see yung struggles nila and challenges nila in facing both being a mother and being a student. Ayan. So, maybe for the key terms, pwede natin gamitin yung words nyo kanina na coping mechanism. And then from the coping mechanism, lalabas yung word na struggle and struggles. And then... They define the terms. Ano yung ba yung coping mechanism? Ano ba yung nursing mother? And then, um, who is a senior high student? And then, from that, from that one, they will now formulate. Ma'am Erlinda, can you give me an example of one open-ended question that you would like to ask, which you can polish later on? During the, ano? Yes, ma'am. Pag unwari mag-interview kayo ng bata, ano yung... Um, open-ended question mo. You can actually publish that one later. Parang sample lang natin. Ano po yung pwede nating open-ended question? Mm, I would like to ask sana uh, as a mother sandali. Pwedeng mag-formulate mo na. Yun yung ginagawa ko kanina. Ang hirap mag-formulate. <laughs> Ayan, sige, mambalikan ka namin. Ayan, ah, so, na uh -huh. <laughs> so, we have one title na po, ah, yung coping mechanism. Baka sa working title nila, idadagdag din nila yung struggles. The struggles and coping mechanism of, bre of senior high school breastfeeding students. Parang ganun. So, they have to, ano lang, ayusin siguro yung title. Anybody pa ho? So, at least meron na po tayong isa. Um, anybody pa ho? Sino pa po ang may, can, may qualitative? Yes, Ma'am Kalusa. Thank you po for raising your hand. Para lang po ma-check po. Yes, okay. Ma'am. This, uh, this action research or qualitative research po was uh, discussed last Monday uh, during our first day. So we raised the 
uh, question. So we decided to come up with a title, Causes of the Delay of Submission of Modules of the Lear Grade 1 Learners of Dominican Mirador Elementary School. And then for our key terms, um, we have the causes or the reasons, and then the delay, not submitting on time, and then submission is turning in the answered modules for assessment. Uh, modules are the printed self-learning modules used as a learning modality. And then learners, the individuals enrolled in grade one at Dominican Mirador Elementary School. For the question, uh, we are going to ask what are the causes of the delay of submission of modules of the learners of Dominican Mirador Elementary School in terms of modular printed and modular digitized. <laughs> Yun po, ma Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I have one more uh, title here. Uh, I am planning to work uh, individually. Challenges of grade one learners in mother tongue through printed modules. Yes, ma'am. Mm -mm. Ayan. Yun so, po ang, ano, ma'am. Ayan, Pero hindi pa po ako nakapag-isip ng questions, ma'am. <laughs> Kailan po, ma'am. Ma'am, thank you po for sharing. So, yeah. yung first po ni ma'am na tap nila, parang narinig ko sa background na quanti daw sila. Um, actually, you can do the one po the mix method. Um, una, magpo-quanti po tayo. Um, maybe we can have a survey. Ano ba yung mga causes of delay? So, meron silang mga checklist. And then later on, pwede natin siyang i-trim down um, we can now have the interview. Yung, so, pwede na tayong magtanong um, personally sa parent and then sa child, ano ba yung causes ng kanilang um, delay in submitting the, the module. So, pwede po siya actually na mix yung, kay, yung sa group nila, Ma'am Kalusa kanina. And then, for the second topic na sinabi ni Ma'am Kayon, pang quality talaga siya yung challenges of a grade 1 learner in MTB using the modular, um, which I think hindi lang siya sa modular, but the challenge Blended mismo na. sa subject na MTB mismo po, yun po mismo talaga yung challenges mm -hmm. ating mga bata. So, pag challenges po of grade 1 learner, um, Ma'am Kalusa, maybe we can have po a short um, sharing. Sino po yung target kaya natin na grade 1 learners? Are these the learners na um, hindi yun ilokano ang kanilang mother tongue. Sila ba yung mga English speaking na mga bata sa ating school? Yes, ma most of the complaints po kasi, uh, nag, uh, ano, nagpa-complain po ang mga iba na hindi nila daw maintindihan ang mother tongue kasi hindi yun ang uh, first, hindi yun ang mother tongue nila <laughs> talaga. Yes, And they speak English only or hindi siguro nagagamit sa bahay, kaya yun, hindi po nila maintindihan yung mga terminology, yung mga vocabulary sa ano. Although yeah. may, may mga clues naman sa module nila, yun pa rin po ang complain ng pere. Ayan. Thank you so much, Ma'am Kalusa. Ayan. So at least, magkakaroon na si ng idea si Ma'am Kalusa na when she will do her qualitative research, at ang galing niya na yung mga estudyante niya na Ilocano speaking. Hindi na sila kasali. So, parang ititrim down niya na lang na, ah, ito na lang yung mga kukunin ko na participan sa aking research. So, in her working title, yung mga pwede niyang i-define na terms doon are yung challenges, who is a grade 1 learner, um, what is MTB, kunwari. And then her questions, ayan. So, she can formulate now the questions based on the definition. So, I repeat po, our question should be open-ended. Huwag po tayong gagamit ng yes or no na question. Ayan. So, thank you so much, Ma'am Kalusa po for sharing. Um, anybody pa po? Sino pa po ang gustong mag-share? Hello po. I, yes, Ma'am. Good morning. Ma'am, I cannot morning. see on my screen. Um, you are Ma'am? Ganado po. Ganado. Ma Ganado. Ma'am, yes po. Can share po? Ako gusto kong i-share itong iniisip ko kung pwede po sana. Yes, um, 
ang uh, title ko po, I don't know if papas- ay, ano, ano papasa ba ito? Malnutrition in Donia Aurora Elementary School. And of course, yung word po dito is the malnut- malnutrition or the unhealthy condition of the learners. And uh, uh, some questions that I formulated was, is, are, what are the causes of malnutrition? Uh, what are some disadvantages of a malnourished child? And what are some ways to prevent uh, malnutrition? Because I have 10 learners po sa school namin na malnourished po since 2019. Na sila po yung mga prioritized na feed po namin as of this time. Kaya gan ito yung naisip kong research po kung pwede po ito ma'am. Ayan. Um, thank you so much, Mang Ganado. So, ang kanilang topic is malnutrition. Um, Ma'am, ano yung balak natin na, ano natin i-collect kaya yung data? Uh, Ma'am, checklist siguro po and then interview sa parents. Ayan. Ten po so, sila. Yes, ma'am. So, pang, pag checklist, um, siguro observation checklist po parang um, titignan natin muna kung pasok ba sila sa tinatawag nating malnourish. And then from their interview, so pwede po. So, pwede siya sa quali. Pero, ano po yung gusto nating tignan mismo doon sa malnourish na yun? Ano po yung saan po siya pupunta, ma'am? Um, ano yung gusto nating tignan in terms of yung malnourish? Um, do we like to see their perspective of um, ano kaya yung perspective nila? Ano ba yung kanilang challenges? Ano yung kanilang struggles? Ano po yung gusto nating makita, ma'am? Ah, okay. Yung naisip ko kasi dito is what are some causes lang Mm-mm. para po, para maano din niya yung an, na, sa question number three na uh, what are the ways to prevent para sana totally ma-eliminate ang malnutrition sa school. Parang ganun po ang nakikita ko. Is this pwede? Um, yes, ma'am. Ganado. Ang um, pag-process lang po yung titignan natin, parang babagsak po siya more on sa uh, quantity. Uh, kasi ma'am, ang checklist tayo. And then... Hmm. Pero kung um, pwede nyo din siyang i-mix method again, it will be discussed by Ma'am Malin. Pag i-mix method natin siya, kukunin na natin yung sampung bata na malnourish para mag-mix method po siya. Which I think was also presented by Ma'am Balutok. Okay po. Okay. Thank you Ma'am. Sige, thank, thank you. Thank you po for sharing. Any Salamat other po? po? Yes Ma'am, thank you po. Anybody po? Um... I think wala na pong nag-raise ng hand. May we go back to Ma'am Agabao and we have po one sample question for your quali. Open-ended, ano? <laughs> yes, Ma'am, open-ended. <laughs> <laughs> Ang hirap si Mulan. <laughs> Mag-isa ba ako dito? Wala ba yung mga kasama ko dito? Ano ang grupo mo, ma'am? Si Miss Lawan at si Miss Kathleen. Oh. Ma'am, nakagsem seminar dati HGP. <laughs> Nalpasan. <laughs> <laughs> ano po yung open-ended natin? Baka pwede natin tanongin, ma'am. What are the... And so, mag sa so what? Mga ganun ba? When we say oh, open-ended. Oo ma'am, pwedeng what para i-identify muna nila yung common na struggles nila. Pwede ma'am, you can start with what para identify ano yung common struggles na na they experience silang mga nursing mothers. Yeah, we would like sana to know uh, during our interview, we would like also to know kung ano yung feeling ngay nila as a mother, yung motherhood. Yes ma'am. Oo, y- yun lang. And, hindi ko nga yung ma-formulate sa pansin. Ayan, so, siguro pwede ma'am yung ano yung what are the um, struggles that you are facing? Parang ganun. And then, how do you cope? So, dagdagan na lang po natin. So, para... Pwede ba yung ano ma'am? Pwede ba yung uh, uh, what challenges or what 
are your challenges being a mother at the same time a student? Yes, ma'am. Pwede po yun, ma'am. At sa mga ganon. Ah, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, open-ended na po yun kasi depende po yun sa experience nila. And then later on, pag apat sila, titignan natin ano yung common sa kanila. Yun po sa yung kanila. lalabas sa ating qualitative. Ayan po. So, that's the title. So, the, that's the first part po of our um, qualitative research. Yeah. I- Ayan. So, we morning, move on ma'am. po. Ay, good ma'am. morning po, ma'am. Ay, ma'am. Itanong ko lang ito. Kapapasok ko ma'am. lang. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Uh, ma'am Chaloy po. Mimi. Ay, ma'am Chaloy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, for quali po ba ito? ito uh, I base it ngay sa result ng Filiri, both Filipino and English. Yes, ma'am. Uh, enhancing reading comprehension through strategy intervention to the grade 4 pupils. Ay, um, kung meron kang mga intervention, ma'am, um, usually it falls under sa quanti, oh. quantitative po siya, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Um, tapos kung ipapasok niyo po yung inyong innovation, parang pupunta po siya sa tinatawag nating action research. Ah, okay. Kung i-test niyo po, ma'am, ay yung ano niyo yung inyong strategy? Mm-hmm. Test niyo ba, ma'am? Uh, ma'am, ang gusto ko lang i-ano kung kasi yung mga bata kasi uh, yung first kasi na inano ko is reading assessment on Phil Eri. Yes, tapos ngayon, uh, parang nagdadalawang isip ako. So itong enhancing reading comprehension naman na. Ma'am, maganda nga yung ano yung una mong sinabi kanina kasi at least um meron ka ng innovation, tapos meron ka pang research. Aha, okay, okay, ma'am. And thank you so much po, ma'am, ma'am. for sharing. Thank you. Anybody pa po? May Koti WD, you can, ano po, you can input, baka naman po, <laughs> you can share something po. Ayan, so that's the title po for the qualitative. Ayan, so we now go to the introduction and the rationale of the study. For the introduction and the rationale, we now include research gaps which should be presented in an inverted pyramid. Pag sinabi po nating inverted pyramid, doon po sa top ng ating pyramid o yung tinatawag nating final structure, we start po with the broad statement. Um, we can start with the global. Kung meron kang napapansin na kunwari, um, problema sa community natin in terms of globally, then we start with that one. So you can include their related literature on gaps discussing about your topic. And then from the glo- global um, setup, you can now go into your um, community. Ano naman kaya yung sa setup natin sa Cordillera? Kung hindi sa Cordillera, sa Baguio, marami ba ang nursing mothers na studyante? Halimbawa, and then, yes, I think kasi tayo ang may highest rate of um, teenage pregnancy doon sa study ng PAPCOM yata. So you can use that one po as a baseline. And then, from there, sa pinakababa po ng inyong introduction and rationale, you now go into your context. Ano ba yung nasa school setting natin? Ano ba yung nakita natin? So you can now tell in your introduction and rationale na in the school, um, I have noticed that uh, ito nga yung mga bata, hindi nagsasubmit, and then when I interviewed them, I found out that um, a lot of them are uh, has just given birth and then they are now nursing, mother, and at the same time, students. So, ganun po yung pagsusulat natin ng introduction and rationale, which I think was also emphasized by Sir Peter that we always start po with the global and then sa ating community and then in our own context. Bakit po natin kailangan isingit yung ating context? Kasi po yun yung pinaka-importante talaga para nalalaman natin what is now the purpose and the significance. Bakit mo pinag-aaralan? Bakit mo pinag-aaralan yung mga nursing mothers na yun? Kasi you are now affected as a teacher. So you want to go in detail. Ano ba yung kanilang struggles? Ano yung kanilang coping mechanism? So that you as a teacher in that class would be able to address yung need, yung problem in your situation. So that is how we do our introduction and rational. So very simple lang po. So so in my study before na graffiti, public art, or vandalism, 
paano ko ginawa yung introduction in rational? Hindi ko na po kinapi kasi medyo mahaba. So I started with the definition of graffiti. And then I also included my personal observation on graffiti around the city. So parang nakita ko na in the city, pag bagong pintura yung wall, bagong pintura yung gate, mamaya bigla na lang may magsusul magsusulputan or mushrooming of the graffiti. And then I also included the city ordinance um, number 41, which is now the anti-graffiti code of the city of Baguio. And then, meron din pong pinalabas ang ating division office, which is now um, Division Memorandum 171 Series of 2012, wherein nag-disseminate sila on the bad effects of graffiti. So, yung mga laws, yung mga um, promulgations, at least nagkakaroon tayo ng basis na we have existing laws, we have existing policies, pero ano yung ano, nakikita nating problema? Still, in my research, I found out Nakita ko pa rin na there are still um, a growing number of graffiti images around the city. So that is how I did my introduction and rational. So when we do po your um, introduction and rational again, sa activity natin, una, on your paper, we outline. Ano ba yung nakita nating problem, gaps, and then issues? So example is yung challenges ng grade 1 learner. Ano yung nakita natin? Um, ilagay nyo dyan, kunwari, you have to tell the story. The children cannot understand kasi they cannot speak the language. Halimbawa, since they cannot speak the language, they cannot understand, parang ang dami pang language na pinag-aaralan sa grade 1 na classroom. So yun yung mga problems, gaps, and issues. And then maybe you can also include ano ba yung sa country natin. I think a lot of uh, the people are calling for the removal of the MTB kasi nga po parang hindi daw po yata maganda. Um, if I remember in our city, um, si Ma'am, meron pong isang principal who studied about MTB. Then you can include that one po in your in your um, gaps and then issues or include that in your um, sa ating rational or introduction. So, on your paper po, i-outline natin ano yung mga problem natin na nakikita in our context, ano yung problem naman sa country natin and then sa ating um, sa ating region. And then, i-arrange po natin siya funnel, okay? So, start po natin first country and then, kung meron sa country, merong call. I think from the Senate, merong call to remove it. Yung MTB halimbawa. And then in the region, Cordillera, ilagay nyo yung issue that not all in the region speaks Ilocano. Maybe you can have, um, you can use the LE, MLESF, kunwari, sa inyong school na later on. Or yung general, kunwari sa MLESF ng division, ano ba yung lumalabas na mother tongue ng mga grade 1 learners. Tapos sa iyong context, gamitin mo naman yung MLESF ng school nyo para i-explain mo naman or ipakita mo yung problem or gap ng ating mga grade 1 learners in terms of MTB. So that's the So we continue po. So before we proceed, um, Sir Banooy asked a question if the procedure in writing the introduction and rationale is the same for the quanti and quali. Um, yes, sir, it's the same po. So for um, quanti and quali, it's the same. We also use the inverted pyramid or the final structure. So we always start with the broad um, statement that is in the context of sa ating global community. Um, kung meron, kung wala naman po, then we start with the country. Tapos kung meron sa region or sa city, and then we go into now into the into our context in the school, especially sa ating ano po sa ating skwelahan. So wag mong i describe yung context ng ibang skwelahan kung hindi naman sa skwelahan mo gagawin yung study. So um, what I am um, sharing here is actually the same with the 
with the qualitative, ang pagkakaiba lang po is iba na lang po yung ginagamit natin na mga terms or mga designs but the way we present it, it's actually the same po. So that is for introduction and rationale. So I hope we are able to have a grasp on how we write again our introduction and rationale. First, we outline the problems, the gaps, and the issues. Um, we can have here really related literature. Um, the literature needs uh, not to be always agreeing to our study. Pwede rin po yung mga studies that negates our study. Maganda rin pong idagdag yun para in the end we can prove that this study sa ating study is not um, um, does not support kumbaga it's negating. Ayan. So we have to describe, we have to narrate, ikwento po natin ano yung problema, ano yung gaps, ano yung issues that we are experiencing sa last paragraph po ng ating introduction and rationale. Yun na po yung mismong problema, existing problems in our context in our school. Now, for the research design sa, um, sa atin pong quali, um, yung ating mga research design is um, diniscuss po siguro ni Sir Peter yung ating mga um, descriptive. Is it descriptive correlational? Is it descriptive um, comparative? Is it quasi-experimental? So, for quali naman po, ang ating research design um, which I think was discussed by Ma'am Bulutok, there are actually, um, meron actually yung historical, pero kakaunti po kasi yung gumagawa ng ating historical kasi very limited yung time. And then, especially if we are in the city, parang mahirap i-conduct ang historical masyado. So for the type, we have the narrative um, study. So the nature is interesting story. And then we only need one to two participants. And then um, at the end of our research, we're going to generate a generalization. For case study naman, an in-depth story, we can have one or more participants. And then ano naman yung lesson learned? Yun naman yung kanyang um, data collected later on. For grounded theory, we will be um, looking into the process. So you can have a sampling of 20 or more, and then you will be there, um, arriving at a theory. And then for FENO, um, ito yung very common sa ating um, SDO Baguio. Parang siya yung pinaka-common na uh, research design that we are using. We are looking into the essence, and we can have 3 to 13 participants. So the essence or the collective description, ano ba yung ating hinahanap. So this is my sample of a research design, though matagal na kasi siya kaya hindi siya naka third person kasi for the birth naging third person siya. So ang ginamit natin dati for uh, the previous researches was the first person. So Nilagay ko dito, um, so in your research design, ilalagay nyo ano yung, um, is it qualitative, quantitative, or mix? So that's the first sentence. So the research is qualitative study using FENO. So you include your research design. So pwedeng FENO, narrative, case study, in, in, sa quality naman. Pwede naman, pwede ilagay nyo um, descriptive comparative, it is quasi-experimental. And then you explain bakit um, FENO yung ginamit nyo. So in my study here, I use FENO to understand social and psychological phenomena. phenomena. So I just lifted this one from an author. So sa quanti naman, para hindi pala mawala yung ating mga quanti na participants, you also describe bakit ang gagamitin mo ay descriptive, um, comparative. So ganun din po. And then you explain now the reason why you are choosing that research design and then at the end of the um, at the end of the statement you now go again sulat na naman ulit natin ano ba yung ating general aim why we are doing the study so on your paper i want you to identify the type of research and design so ilagay po natin sa paper natin kung quality quantity or mix that's number 1 that's for the research design Number two, um, 
ay number one, so quality, quantity, or mix. Isulat po natin kung ano yun. And then ano yung research design natin? Pag, um, pag quality, ang mga pwede natin ilagay ay um, is it a case study, grounded theory, is it feno, um, historical, ba ang gagamitin natin? Pag quantity, is it descriptive, is it correlational, is it experimental? So yun po yung number one. And then number two, um, later on you can describe ano ba yung research design na bakit feno yung ginamit mo, bakit case study yung ating gagamitin, bakit experimental. And then the last part will be we state now the reason again for conducting the research. So ganun po ang pagsulat ng ating research design. I repeat, it's the same po for quantity and quality except na iba lang po yung nilalaman kasi magkaiba po talaga yung kanilang research design. So, palikan natin sila ma'am Agabaw kasi dalawa lang yung narinig ko na parang nag-share ng quality. Sila ma'am Agabaw, um, what type po of research design po kaya tayo? Ma'am Agabaw, are you still there po? I'm here, ma'am. Ah, yes, ma'am. Ano po kaya yung gagamitin nating research design sa inyong um, topic? Actually, nung uh, we have our discussion regarding our uh, planned research, we are talking about grounded theory sana. Pero based on your presentation, parang hindi yata siya uh, applicable doon kasi... 20 or more ang nakalagay. Parang oo. Parang more on. Pwede nyo siyang i-case study or kaya kung oh, gusto nyo po yung oo, kung, kung gusto nyo po yung kanilang lived experiences, you can have po yung feno. So, yeah, iniisip yung... namin una yung feno pero sabi namin parang ang babaw. Mm -hmm. eh, uh, we are talking about their struggles kasi and coping mechanism. Kaya ang second na uh, parang plan B namin is the case study. Parang okay naman noon sa, sa presentation mo. Kaya nung tinitingnan ko parang na X na yung grounded. Yes ma'am. So, so parang, ang second na is parang case study na talaga siya. Yes ma'am. At least um, you will be arriving at lessons learned. So in-depth po yung at paggawa sa ating case study. Thank yes. you so much, Ma'am Agabaw. And then si Ma'am po yung sa um, challenges of a grade 1 um, learner na MTB, um, there are 10, 10, 10 po yung kanilang identified na participants. Ma'am, balikan po natin. Kanina, kanina na po yun. Kay Ma'am Kalusa po ba yun kanina? Ma'am Kalusa? Um, pag wala ho siya, pag in yes, case, ay ma'am Kalusa, sa inyo na po iboy yung MTB ulit? Yes, saglit lang po ma'am. <laughs> ma'am, uh, phenomenology na lang po siguro. Feno. Um, bali, ang titignan po nyo ma'am is the lived experiences of your grade 1 MTB learners. Ayan po. So at least nakaka-decide na po tayo as we, decide, as we discuss nadi-decide na po natin na tatanggal na po natin yung hindi pwede sa ating study. So, the same po with um, quantity also. Um, eliminate na kung ano na po yung based on your um, questions. Eliminate also the research design which cannot be, which is not possible sa inyong um, topic or lesson. Ayan. So, um, in terms of sampling, so pare-pareho din po, quality, quantity, mix, um, we have to write our sampling. So for quality, sabi niya, it doesn't rely on large sample sizes. Unlike for quantity, that it needs um, large sample sizes. So yun po yung pagkakaiba talaga na isa natin makitang difference ng quality and quantity. Pag quantity, we need large population para we can arrive at a certain decision to accept, to negate, to reject, parang ganun. Pero po, pag um, quality, kahit na isang tao lang case study na po yan, pwede na natin pag-aralan yung iisang bata. Um, and then, we can also have a lot for grounded theory. So, what do we include in our sampling? 
So we include the type of sampling. Um, sa quali, I think Sir Peter discussed this one. So paano nyo po tinutes ang inyong um, population for your survey? Halimbawa, paano po natin pinili? Lahat po ba? Is it total enumeration or random sampling? Yun po sa quanti and then many more. Sa quali naman, ano po yung ating sampling? So based on the type of research design. So pag narrative study po, um, one to two case and then one multiple grounded 20 or more peno three and then ano po tayo na mili um, usually for qualitative we have what we call as purposive sampling or pag minsan nagkakaroon din po tayo ng tinatawag natin convenience sampling um, pag purposive po identified na po um, nakita na po natin na sila yung participants natin kasi sila yung nagfit sa um, description ng ating participant. So that's actually purposive. Convenience naman, sila yung available, kaya sila na yung ating um, participants. Kasi nga, sila yung pede na nag-fit and then sila yung available. Ayan. So, I have your example, kunwari, um, but this one should be in the third person for the verb. Okay? So, sa the researcher, pag sinulat nyo sa verb, ang ilalagay nyo is the researcher, ganun po. Pero since ito kasi is a long, is a, an old research, so ang nilagay ko is my study or the researcher used purposive sampling. Ayan, purposive sampling is characterized by incorporation of specific criteria met by the participants in the moment of selection. There were five key informants who, uh, of the study who are active at making graffiti in public places. The key informants were composed of three students and two OSY who are residing at Baguio City. So meron na tayong idea. Ano yung participants ko? Um, number one, they should be um, active at making graffiti. Number two, they are residents of Baguio City. So yun lang po yung criteria ko that was set in my study. So purposive sampling kasi bakit lilima? Um, actually, in my first study, um, yung unang proposal ko was actually 10. But because uh, the act was actually illegal, hindi siya katanggap-tanggap, ayaw nilang magpakilala, ayaw nilang magpa-interview, kaya yung 10 naging 5 na lang. So, ganyan po yung pagsulat natin ng sampling. So, for quali, again, ilagay po natin, are you going to use purposive? Are you going to use um, convenience? Pag quanti naman, ano po ang gagamitin natin? Is it total enumeration? Lahat po ba ng teachers sa school? Lahat po ba ng estudyante nyo? Um, pag experimental naman, um, ano po ang ginawa natin? Nag-random sampling ba kayo? Or lahat ng babae, ito ang mag Ito ang mabibigyan ng intervention. Lahat ng lalaki, walang intervention. So you have to discuss po. And then, ilan ang participant for quali? Pag quanti naman, ilan ang respondents? So you also describe your respondents sa quali. Are they all teachers? Um, female teachers ba sila lahat? Are this or lahat ba sila retirable kung yun ang gusto mong study? So you have to include that in the sampling. So on your paper, I want you po to identify the participants in your study. So ilagay po natin. Ano po ang gagamitin natin? Is it convenient, purposive? Ayan po. And then, ayan na. So nakita nyo na po dito. Pag... Pag feno and then case study, those are actually um, purposive. Ayan. And then you describe your participants. So ano yung participants nyo? So sa breastfeeding, dapat ano yung characteristic nila? They should be females who are nursing mothers and at the same time enrolled in the senior high school of Pine City National High School. Pag yung atin namang MTB, they are grade one learners who are not, um, who have, who have kunwari, English as their first language. They are also enrolled dito sa school na ito, halimbawa. Pag sa 
Quanti naman, ilagay niyo din ano yung sampling niyo, you did random sampling that out of the total population, kunwari 100, ito lang po yung magpa-participate sa aking study. Ito lang po yung aking respondents. So it's the same po. Ang pagkakailang ba lang po again dito sa ating sampling, pag quanti, we call them respondents. Pag quali, we call them participants. Just raise your hand po if there are questions or just write it po in the chat box kung meron po tayong clarification or in Ayan. For data collection naman, how do we collect the data for the qualitative? Um, for data collection sa ating qualitative, we can do yung pinatawag natin one-on-one -on -one interview or face-to-face -face interview. But since hindi po pwede ngayon ang face-to-face, -face, um, you can also have phone calls or video calls. Pwede po siya. And then FGD is what we call as focus group discussion. Yung parang lahat kayo, um, ako nandito yung um, participant as a researcher and then I ask question and then you give answers. Parang yun po ang tinatawag natin focus group discussion. Record analysis, um, you can go to the guidance office. Ano yung kanyang anecdotal record? Or kung wala namang anecdotal record ang guidance, um, you can go to their previous advisors or previous teachers you ask them, um, ano yung mga na-observe niya sa batang ito, kunwari. And then, um, you can also do your own observation. Um, pero I think right now, kasi since it's um, may virus nga, hindi siya pwede. Um, ayan po. So, I will only answer yung dalawang question. Um, I don't know if it's ma'am or sir. Um, nga lub. For quanti, tama po, respondents. And then for quali, participants. And then ma'am, um, ma'am, Malin po will discuss mixed method. So, sasabihin niya po sa inyo kung ano po yung gagamitin nating tamang term. Is it respondent or participant po? So, titignan po natin kasi um, meron po kasing klase ng um, mixed method. Depende po yung sa discuss ni Ma'am, Ma'am Balutok po. Ayan. Ayan. So, um, for our data collection, ano po yung ilalagay natin? We include the instrument to be used. Um, for quanti, baka gagamit po kayo ng survey questionnaire. So, dapat po, sabi ni Sir Peter, dapat the survey questionnaire if it was adapted, should have been um, validated and then dapat meron siyang reliability test. So, hindi pwedeng mag-adapt agad-agad. Pag ikaw naman ang gumawa, um, was it also, um, had, had the questions been validated again, dapat din meron siyang reliability test. And then, for quali naman po, ano yung instrument na gagamitin natin? Is it an interview guide? Yung pinakita ko po kanina. Pag interview guide po, ayan, so we include it. Bakit po ang ginamit po ay semi-structured um, interview guide? So, i-explain natin siya later on. Um, describe the procedure. How are you going to collect? So, kung sa quanti po, ang, pag, ang procedure nyo is you float the questionnaire, di pa ganun po, and then we tally, parang ganun. Pag sa quali, quali naman, you describe the procedure. So, nag-ask ka ng question, and then since it's open-ended and it's semi-structured, um, are you allowed to do follow-up questions? Yan po. And then we attach the gathering tool. So, sa ating proposal po, whether it's quanti, quali, or mixed method, we always attach the gathering tool. So, kung meron po tayong survey questionnaire, meron po tayong interview guide, ilagay po natin, i-attach po natin sa likod so that the TWG who will be checking, makita niya kung yung ating questions ay aligned, uh, yung ating survey questions, ang ating interview guide ay aligned sa ating main question for the um, quali and then for the quanti, naka-align ba yung ating survey questionnaire sa ating mga um, questions na per item. So pag ang tinanong mo kunwari ay academic performance, dapat... Um, ay kunwari, what is the, is there a relationship kunwari yung 
um, yung may effect ba yung sex sa academic performance. So, dapat doon sa ating um, survey questionnaire, nakikita ba yung male and female? Kasi pag wala yun, hindi po natin siya pwedeng idagdag. So, magkaiba lang po yung data collection, but the way we have to present it, it's the same. Ayan po. So, I repeat um, for... Ayan. So, yan po ang ating... Quali. So, interviewing, ayan. So, you can do interview and then after interviewing, you transcribe. Ayan. Group interviewing, yung FGD po. And then, ito po yung tinatawag nating triangulation. So, aside from interviewing, pwede ka ding mag-FGD, focal ay focus group discussion. So, kunwari, ang case study nyo is apat, kunwari, pwede mo silang interview mo na isa-isa. That's one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And then later on, pag samasamahin mo yung apat, then you can have the focus group discussion. And then you can also review the documents. Kunwari yung kanyang MLESF, ano ba yung kanilang um, setup sa bahay. Mag-triangulation po tayo. So... Data collection, this is the example. Kunwari, um, the researcher used audio recorder and field notes to document the answers of the key formats. Photographs were also used in the study. They were also given a copy of the main questions that were asked during the... Before the researcher conducted the interview, um, a letter of permission from the school was given to the key informants and asked for the parents' consents, consent of those who were under 18 years old. Moreover, consent from the key informants were also asked if they were in. The researcher used face-to-face, -face, final paper na po ito kayo, ang tone niya, face-to-face um, -face semi-structured interview for the study. It was used when the researcher prepares a specific set of questions but could ask follow-up question to the researcher. So, ganyan po yung data collection natin. Thank you for bringing my panty inside, Tara Mirawan. You're such a good girl. Sir Terry, pakinute naman po. Ayan. Thank you, ma'am. Ayan. So, for data collection po, I repeat, for quanti, ilagay po natin. You can use yung survey. And then, kung dahil po may pandemic, paano nyo po kinote? Is it through a Google form, parang ganun po. Tapos pag sa quantity naman, eh quality naman po, ano po yung ginamit natin? Um, is it an interview guide? Ayan, gumamit po ba tayo ng face-to-face, um, one-on-one? Um, is it a focus group discussion? And then did you use po um, observation? Ayan, so yan po ang data collection. Yan. So, for the activity po on your paper, I want you po to identify the instrument that you will be using. Whether it's quantity po or quality, you can answer the question po. Una, ano po yung instrument na gagamitin natin? Is it a survey questionnaire or quantity? For quality, ang gagamitin po ba natin ay documents, um, observation, is it a, an interview guide? Ayan po. And then, Um, the next one is, how will you collect the data po? So for quantity, are you going to float the questionnaires through Google Forms? Ayan, ilalagay po natin yan. Pag sa quality naman po, how are you going to collect the data? So include na po natin yung ating triangulation po in describing our collection of data. So, balikan po ulit natin si Ma'am Kalusa for Grade 1 MTB. Ma'am Kalusa, how do you like po to collect your data for your qualitative research in case na itutuloy po natin yung challenges of a Grade 1 learn, MTB learner? Wala si Ma'am Kalusa. How about po si Ma'am Agabaw for the breastfeeding? Learners, uh, we will uh, do recording. We will have uh, home visitation since they cannot come to school. 
So, magbe-visit po kami. Uh, based sa mga addresses kasi nila, uh, medyo okay naman napuntahan. Hindi naman kalayuan. Thank you, ma'am. So, parang ano siya, magta-triangulate po kayo mag- i-interview um, para hindi po kayo magsusulat na so you can have it recorded. Yes, Pero we have to inform po the parent and then the child the will record po. Yan. Tapos <laughs> after that one, um, pwede po natin gamitin din yung, uh, yung kanilang record. So pwede po natin gamitin yung kanilang grades or yung kanilang output as uh, ah, okay. record analysis po para nakita natin na Um, siguro mababa ba yung kanilang mga scores, mababa ba yung kanilang grades. And then, um, when we are also doing the interview, we can also have yung observation, yung mga non-verbal, non-verbal po na gestures na parang when you ask them this question, parang they are not, um, parang hindi sila tawag doon, parang nahihiya kaya when you ask them this question or parang they are not They don't like to answer the question. Parang may, parang hesitant. So you can include that po in your um, description on how you will be collecting your data. So yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. The same din po sa ating quanti. Um, wag po tayong mawala sa ano natin. Ganun din po. We, again po, sa instrument po na gagamitin natin, pag-survey po yan, ilagay po natin yung ating validity coefficient and then our reliability and then um, so kailangan po yun um, I hope Sir Peter tinuro po niya kung paano po natin makukuha yung ating mga validity coefficient kasi dapat po ay na-pilot testing natin yung ating survey questionnaire. Ayan, so that is research design. Now for the plan for data analysis, this is actually the second to the last for the um, Third to the last po pala for the research proposal. For the plan for data in analysis, how are you going now to fit your data? So for, um, for a qualitative, actually, we are not talking of data. We're talking of constructs or concepts. So how pa paano po natin siya i-report? Re so pag narrative story, a narrative study, parang dapat siya meron siyang generalization and then pag case study and lessons learned so grounded theory naman you have a theory and then pag peno meron siyang essence or meaning so how do you plan to do it so first you have to be familiar with your data and then you have to code the data so what i did po in my quali was i have to encode the From the, yung sinulat ko and then from my recording, um, I have to encode it verbatimly. And then, so, inisa-isa ko po yung aking in-interview na mga bata, mga graffiti artists. And then from there, um, tinignan ko po kung ano yung pare-pareho na lumalabas. And then, yung mga patterns po. And then from there, nagkakaroon na po tayo ng mga teams. Medyo ano lang po siya, medyo um, taxing talaga compared to quanti. Kasi pag quanti, nilagay mo siya sa Excel, um, you can already get the uh, measures of central tendency. Makukuha mo na yung mean. Ano ba yung average? Are they satisfactory? Are they outstanding? Parang ganun po. And then from there, you can also include pag um, quanti ano po yung gagamitin natin pag significant difference? Are we going to use t-test to test the hypothesis of our study? Ayan po. Are we going to use um, Pearson correlation? Yun po ba? Yan. So, yan po yung nilalagay natin sa plan for data analysis. So, ito po yung sa akin, sa quali. Ang ginamit ko po is thematic analysis. Ay, hindi pala. This is not my study. This is actually on um, creative leadership. So, ang ginamit niya ay thematic analysis. So, diniscuss niya ano yung thematic analysis. Merong phase one, the researcher familiarize herself with the data. Ito po yun, phase one. Phase two, um, initial codes. And then phase three, um, initially coding, collating, identifying the data. Phase four, reviewed the themes, and then um, phase five, defining and naming the themes. 
Um, actually, um, later on, pag nabuo po natin yung paper natin sa Quali, um, one of the ethics po talaga is dapat po pagka na-generate na po natin yung themes, babalik po tayo sa bata, babalik po tayo sa individual, kung principal man po yung interview natin, ipapakita po natin kung ano po yung lumabas. Yun po yung isa sa mga ethics ng ng quali. Unlike po for quanti na hindi mo na kailangan ipakita ulit sa kanila kasi nga um, you are generating from a large population. So that's how you write po your plan for data analysis. Ayan. So um, Again, on your paper, um, how will your data be analyzed? Um, so, most po sa atin, pag-quali, thematic analysis. So, iligay po natin yung steps and then we identify the type of analysis. Gagamit po ba tayo ng cool and warm analysis. The same po for, for quanti. How are you going to analyze? And then, um, ethical issues po. For ethical issues naman, um, which was discussed, I think, by Ma'am Jane, and lahat po tayo, whether it's quanti quali or mix, kailangan po natin ilagay ang ating ethical consideration. For the right to conduct a study or investigation or to answer a question. So kung, hindi siya, kung ayaw niyang sagutin yung question, huwag po natin ipilit kasi nga meron siyang the right to answer. A question and then we have to secure free prior and informed uh, consent from respondent or participants so even if it's quanti dapat meron din sinilang informed consent um, which is in a form of a letter um, usually coming from our school principal na meron tayong letter na we are going to conduct a study sasagutin ng matcher so pinapakita po natin yan hindi po pwedeng questionnaire na lang agad na wala man lang Ano ba yung bakit ako sumasagot ng ganitong questionnaire? And then, um, for our learners um, who are actually 18 years old and below, we also have to secure yung tinatawag nating parents waiver. And then dapat yung parents waiver should have been explained to the child and to the parent. So nandoon sila pag mag interview ka, um, ito po yung gagawin ko ma'am. Um, Ito po yung mga tanong, ipapakita mo din yung tanong. Ito po yung mga questions na ipatanong ko sa kanya. And then, um, kinakanda ko po yung study na to. What's your reason? And then, um, wag po kayong mag-alala kasi yung anak po natin, um, hindi ko po ilalagay yung kanyang pangalan sa aking study. Um, so, ilalagay po natin yung anonymity. And then, all the data collected will only be used for research purposes. And then um, anything that we will use po um, should be um, properly cited po. Ayan. So ethical issues, lahat po tayo meron po nito. Um, but for learners po, especially for quali, wag po natin kalimutan na magpapirma po ng ating parents waiver. Kaya pag naghanap po si research uh, group sa ating uh, division office ng pictures. Um, yung pictures po, um, di ba, tinatakpan po natin yung mata ng mga bata, especially po pag bata yung mga in-interview natin. Hindi po pwedeng pinapakita natin yung itsura ng bata kasi nga po, um, they have the right to be anonymous in our study. Um, so, I think that's the last part po of my topic. Ayan. So, ayan. So, ethical issues. Ayan. The key informants, this is the sample. The key informants were personally briefed by the researcher on the nature of the study and were given assurance that their answers shall, shall only be used for academic purposes and that their names and personal information shall be treated confidentially in order to gain the consent of the participant. Bakit po kailangan ang anonymity? Um, para po magkaroon tayo, mag-build po tayo ng trust. Kasi pag sasabihin po natin yung hindi natin sinabi to sa bata, baka hindi niya sasabihin yung totoo niyang nararamdaman. So baka yung honesty and integrity of the participant, hindi po siya maging valid.
The researcher informed the participants, the parts of the research, the, the rationale, ayan, how it will be conducted, and then advantages and disadvantages, the right ayan, to research at any given time, and even the right to withdraw kung ayaw na po nilang part ng research. Ay, ma'am, ayaw ko na po ano, kasali sa research niyo, ma'am. So they also have the right to withdraw. Ayan. So lahat po yan ilalagay natin sa ating ethical issues. So, um, on your paper again po, um, you include again ano po yung ating mga kailangan na idagdag sa ating qualitative. So, yung mga gagamit po ng mga student as participants, ilagay po natin sa ating listahan yung ating parents waiver para hindi po natin makalimutan. And then, even for our quanti, um, let us also secure our letter of permission to conduct our study from our principal. Pag district po ang ating um, target, um, please get um, the letter of approval to float your questions from our PSDS. Pag division naman po, dapat from our division superintendent. So, tignan po natin yung ating scope and then kung sino po yung pwedeng magbigay sa atin ng permission. And then, ayan po, so Lahat po yan ilalagay natin, yung consent, um, and then ano yung steps natin na gagawin natin sa ating participants that we have to inform this one. And then saan gagamitin yung data that will be used for our research. So that's the end po of my presentation. And um, congratulations po sa mga sumunod po sa aking presentation you were able to write already an outline of your research proposal para during the asynchronous, gagawin na lang po natin siyang paragraph form. So, hindi na po tayo mahihirapan. Ayan, Sir Ferry. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much po. And, uh, yan. Uh, maraming maraming salamat, ma'am, for uh, giving us all of those things for the qualitative research. Uh, ma'am, certificate to follow na lang, ha, ma'am? <laughs> and ma'am, sorry, kanina nung after ng break, hindi ako nakabalik agad. Uh, may client lang. Anyway, ayan po. Uh, sa mga participants po natin, it's only 11, no? So, what would be ano kaya, uh, the best sa ating mga participants? Would you want the, the breakout room to start immediately or we'll be back at 1 o'clock na lang po? Any feedback po kaya from our uh, participants? Would you like to have an early break, an uh, early lunch, or uh, or ituloy na po natin? Uh, ma'am, nandito na po ba ang ating mga TWC? Si Ma'am Lilibeth po, are you here po Ma'am Lilibeth? Yes, nandiyan ba siya si Ma'am Lilibeth? Si Sir Sherwin, uh, wala pa siya dito, ano? Pero nasabihan ko na siya so mga after siguro. And then si ang susunod natin ay si Sir Regan. I'm not sure kung nandito si Sir Regan. Sir Regan, are you here po? Okay, nandito siya. Okay. Pero I think ano no, medyo hmm, ano pa siya, medyo masyado pang masyado uh, oh, wala pa yung ano. Ah, uh, Ma'am Ma'am Jovirus, ano po? Um uh, can we host a, a bit of a Q&A? kung meron pa silang questions, ma'am. Okay lang po, ma'am? Yes, sir. Apo, ma'am. Okay, so mga participants po natin, please raise your ano po, raise your questions na while the speaker is uh, still ready. I mean, still still here with us po. Kasi later on, baka busy na si ma'am. Hindi natin sure. <laughs> mga participants po, go ahead po. Um, it's time for you to ano na po, to raise your questions and kung meron kayo mga hindi pa na, na clear out dun sa inyo po mga sinusulat na papers, uh, now is the time po. Yan. So far, meron tayong 59 participants this time, no? 57 pala. Mali. You can also ask po pag sa quanti and quali, pag nalilito po kayo. Anyway, nandito naman po yung ibang mga kasama ko. Ah, po. Uh, especially now na parang um, nakikita na natin kung saan patungo po yung research natin if it's going to quanti or quali. 
By the way po ma'am, no, i-announce ko lang. Uh, I've already posted dun sa Facebook group natin, sa mga hindi pa po siguro nakakakita, yung mga resources natin and yung mga templates ng uh, research. Ibig sabihin, you are you can access na lang po lahat ng mga yon mga templates, and uh, pwede na po natin siyang i-plot no, for later. And then, mapapalish po yon when Ma'am May Ann and Ma'am Rose Ann is going to speak about, I mean, are going to speak about the templates and the formatting ng birth and non-birth. So, kung hindi nyo pa po nakita, nandun po yun sa ating Facebook group. Kung hindi pa po kayo member ng ating Facebook group, please uh, member, mag-member po kayo. Ilalagay ko po yung link dito mamaya. Ayan. Questions po sa mga participants natin? Ayan. So, sir, pa-share po ulit yung link ng attendance. O, oh, sige po. Isi-share ko po ulit yan ulit. Uh, Wala, po, wala pong gusto magtanong <laughs> sa atin pong mga participants about the qualitative research. Kahit hindi po qualitative, okay, mga bagay po na gusto nating i-ano ngayon, no? i-clarify about research. Uh, good morning, Ma'am Jovi. Good morning po, Ma'am Mga Lob. Go ahead po. Good morning, Ma'am. Uh, may, na, actually, natanong ko na po ito kay Sir... Uh, Leo nung Saturday, but uh, dinirect niya po ako sa discussion natin for today. However, na, na, sumagot naman siya, but um, gusto ko lang din pakinggan kung ano yung sasabihin naman ni Ma'am Jovi. Uh, kasi palaging naririnig natin sa qualitative yung yung coding, thematizing, meron pa atang categorizing, ganon. So anong difference ng mga ito po? Thank you po. Actually, ma'am, hindi ko nga siya diniscuss kasi it's part of the final paper. Parang nag-stop lang, nag lang ako sa proposal. Um, I don't know if we will have a second wave of this one for the final paper. Sir? Meron ba? Um, wala na po, ma'am. So, I think uh, pwede na rin po, ma'am. Kasi, Kwan, uh, kailang ano, hindi, natin, hindi, hindi ko pala na-specify. Uh, opo, ano, uh, Parang whole of qualitative na sana, ma'am. Pero yun nga, sorry. <laughs> ako ako my, my, my bad. <laughs> Ayan. Um, so, ma'am, bali, um, later on, when para hindi po tayo masyadong technical, um, especially if you are just starting, um, when we have now our, kunwari nag-interview ka na ano, ma'am, um, so what you do po para hindi po tayo masyadong technical and then hindi tayo masyadong mahirapan, what we do is we have the raw data. Meron po yung ating mga na-interview na po, di ba? So meron na yung mga sagot. Um, wala na kasi yung sample ko, natanggal na siya dati. So I want to show you sana kung ano, paano ko po siya ginawa. So kunwari you have there, um, kunwari um, magbigay tayo, kunwari number one si Juana. Wana is uh, may participant number one. And then, ano yung sagot ni Wana sa question number one? So, I have to um, encode it verbatimly. Ganun po yun. And then, si Wana, uh, and then let's have Petra, kunwari, participant number two. Ano naman yung sagot niya sa number one? So, lahat po yun, um, ikakategorize natin lahat yung ating mga participants po and then what is their answer to question number one, kunwari sa ating interview guide number one. And then from there po, um, iha-highlight natin ano yung common, ano yung commonality sa kanilang sagot and then from their commonality mag a po tayo sa mga themes, ano na po yung gusto nating sabihin. So for my research example, ang lumabas na theme ko is Graffiti as a mode of self-expression. Kasi yun yung sa sagot nila, yun yung lumalabas na paulit-ulit. Hindi lang siya lumabas sa question number one, lumabas siya sa ilang question. So, um, ganun po yung ginagawa natin na step sa ating, um, sa pag-treat po natin ng ating mga data that will now be collected. So, pinakauna naman dapat verbatim po ang ating pag-encode ng kanilang sagot. Huwag po nating i-edit yung kanilang sagot. Kung nagmura yung bata nung in-interview po natin, isulat mo yung mura niya doon. Kasi um, they have, we have to see ano ba yung lumalabas, ano ba yung common that is now um, fixing or cementing yung band ng mga 
uh, mga ating participants that is now the same pare-pareho para lumabas po yung theme na the same sa lahat hindi lang yung sa iisang tao lang dapat kung lima yung participant natin lima yung lumalap lima yung sa participants na lima na yon same sila do, do not include themes that is na, that is only present in one participant ganun po siya ma'am um any other addition po nakuha po ba natin ma'am ngalob Uh, so basically, ma'am, when we talk about uh, coding, uh, from the answers of the participants, meron pong pare-pareho, we code them. Tapos yes, from the codes na, uh, na generate natin from the responses, we create a theme. Ganun po ba yun, ma'am? And then, uh, kanina sabi nyo na ikakategorize muna. That's the first step. Ganun po. Ikakategorize muna, and then after that, we code, and then uh, from there, uh, we generate our theme. Ganun po ba, ma'am? Sorry, ma'am. Um, yes, ma'am, tama po yung sinabi nyo. And then, sa theme writing po or sa lessons learned, as much as possible po sana is same po yung length. Though, sa ibang nakita kong libro, hindi naman nila sinasabi na dapat same yung length. Pero parang mas maganda pag same po yung length, parang same yung structure niya. Para at least when the reader will see it, parang nakikita nila na ah, ito yung generated theme. Um, I'll try to look po for my, ano, for my research. Pero yung, ano, raw data, raw data, um, raw data po talagang hindi ko na po siya maipakita kasi na nagpalit na ako ng laptop so I cannot show you. Hi, Ma'am Jovi. Yes, Ma'am. Ma'am, uh, ma'am, ma try kung okay lang to share natin. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay lang to share natin. Yes, ma'am. Okay lang po share natin. Ma'am Jane, ikaw yan. Ma'am Jane. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, ma'am Jane. Hello, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> try natin to, ma'am. Para baka para mas baka... clear siya, ma'am. O oh, makatulong po. Uh, I hope makatulong kay Ma'am uh, Ngalob. Saan po yun? Ito po. Uh, Naka-screen share na po ba? Yes, Ma'am. Ayan. So, kunyari yung sinasabi po ni Ma'am Jovi kanina, ito yun yung parang kapag meron na po kayo na interview, ano? so you, you, you type your transcript into words. After that, we will try to reread, read and reread again our transcript. Of course, we need to check and protect our confidentiality. That's the, the basic one. Tapos yung second po, ayan, try natin na mag-coding process na. How do we do it? So, tingnan natin yung mga word or short phrase that represents now the essence, no? Yung during the interview, tapos yung sa transcript natin, may mga lumalabas na dyan. Lalong-lalo na kapag yung mga na-interview ninyo is tatlo, apat, lima, ganun, parami sila. May mga common sila, no? Sa question number one ninyo, for example, may mga commonality ng lumalabas. Tingnan natin kung ano yung mga common kaya ng mga lumalabas na mga words na they keep on repeating and repeating. Okay? And and then, we try to categorize them into data. So, yun na yung sinasabi natin mga chunks. So, whether mga words yun or phrases, tingnan natin, ano ba yung mga commonality ng respond, uh, participant 1, 2, and 3? Parang ganon. Tapos, anong, ano ba ang iku-code natin kasi? Okay, eto. Yung mga na-repeat for several, uh, na several times during your interview. Something that surprises you. Ano pa, so the interview explicitly states that it is very important. So during the interview, sinabi niya, ay, ma'am, eto, very important to ha, take note of this. Pag sinabi niya yon. Ano pa, you have read about this 
and then it, this is something very similar to the published um, uh, studies already. Tapos pwede mo siyang sinuod of a particular concept or, or a theory. Pwede mo na naman i-lift yun. So yun yung mga bagay na pwede natin i-code. Tapos, from that, so example, ano po? Example, eto. Uh, ang question ni researcher is, what Ma'am Jane, happy ka ngayon, Ma'am Jane. Yan, nawawala si Ma'am Jane. <laughs> Discuss about the importance of looking and to fix problems. Ma'am Jane, chapi ka? Ma'am Jane, naka-mute ka. Tapos chapi ka ngayon, tatay ma'am. Ay, ayan po. <laughs> Pasensya, nawawala yung internet. Okay. Tapos, uh, another one. Ito yung question mo. This year, do you have any particular goal when it, it comes to your job as a teacher at this school? Tapos, ang sasabihin ni interview? Ma'am Jane, nawala yung ano mo, screen share mo. Yung presentation mo, Ma'am Jane. Wala po share screen. Uh, share screen ko lang po ulit. Yes. Ayan. So, eto po. So, this year, do you have any particular goal when it comes to... Not really. I mean, I want my pupils to learn as much as well. So, that, uh, so that is the goal, I guess. Sometimes it's hard though. Tapos, pati yung short silence niya, yung mga ganun, inunot ninyo. Tapos, they keep changing the schedules, the management. I am so frustrating. And all the meetings, I wish, no, na... Possible hindi na makaka-attend yung mga ganon. So, attend meetings. Kaya take note of that. Highlight nyo yan. From that, itrim natin yung mga codes. Yung step 3 natin. Pwede natin itrim yung itrim na natin yung codes. So, ito yun na yung mga yun. I-decide natin which codes are the most important and create categories <coughs> by bringing several codes together. Okay? So, pwede yung ito po. Ito na yung mga lumalabas na codes kanina. So yung question nila earlier, talking about colleagues, reading journals, updating rulebook. For example, ito yung mga nakalapo ninyo na mga codes ninyo kanina. So it can be actually phrases muna or words. Ito yung mga uh, repeated words na nabanggit nung interviewee. From that po, we're going to create now categories and themes. No? Ito po yung sagot nila sa question number one. For example, updating rule, changing schedules. Lagi na lang may new routines. Question number two, ayan, ano ginagawa mo para maka, ma, matulungan mo yung sarili mo? Well, I need to locate and fix problems fast. May quick alarm system ako. Okay, so aside from that, ano pa po ang ginagawa ninyo? Well, it helps kapag nakakausap ko ang mga colleagues ko. Nagbabasa ako ng mga journals. And of course, natutulungan din ako pag nakaka-attend ako ng meetings. Ayan yung mga sagot-sagot na repeated ng interview. From that, ayan. So now, let's try now to label these categories. So, pwedeng itong sagot na naman, isgawa tayo or isip ka ng word na pwede siyang uh, bas po doon. Like, for example, ah, si teacher gumawa siya ng way para 
uh, ano to, maset niya naman. So, adon ang ginawa ni Rizal. Ayan, nawawala si Ma'am Jane. Oo oh, nga, sir, nawawala. Ang ganda-ganda pa man din ng disiplin. Oh, <laughs> Ma'am Ngalog, na para nakikita mo na kasi ganun po yung ano yung style nung ano sa pag-treat ng ating data. Yung pinakita ni Ma'am Jane, so talagang idus siya yung pag-call out nung ating mga teams. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh... Actually, yung pinapakita po niya ay yung process, ano yung processes ng uh, pag-come up talaga ng team. I am also in my assumption now na uh, kapag sinabing, kapag we follow that uh, those particular processes, uh, ang research na uh, ginagawa natin ay more on, more on getting uh, a generalization. Pero ang naiisip ko po ngayon, ma'am, hindi lahat pala ng uh, qualitative research may necessary use uh, those processes. Kasi meron din namang mga researches po pala na uh, you just simply describe. You describe the event or maybe uh, just simply uh, 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 describe a word uh, present in a, in a community. Mga ganun lang po pala yun. So uh, ngayon, uh, kasi ang question ko lang kanina is simply the differences between the the three kasi um, kailangan ba applied siya sa lahat ng qualitative researches. But uh, with the presentation po kanina na na-realize ko na hindi pala siya palagi applicable. Yes po ma'am, especially po pag iisa yung ating participant. Pag kunwari narration, nar narrative study, yan. Pero ang... Um, And then isa pong ipopoint out lang namin ay yung sa kunwari pag 10 po yung ating interview questions po pala baka ang iniisip po natin is 10 na teams po yung lalabas hindi po so yung sa pinakita po ni Ma'am Jane um pwedeng sa 10 questions na yon pwedeng ang lalabas lang na team or generalization ay tatlo dalawa ganun lang po yun so hindi po siya um equal doon sa question doon po sa ating team so nakikita po natin na yung sa pag treat po talaga ng ating mga data would be a little bit tedious pero at the end ma at the end when you finish your study rewarding po siya kasi parang ang dami mong matututunan doon sa experiences ng ating mga participants yan sana po ma'am nga dub nakatulong po yung chinere ni ma'am Jane sa inyo uh, do hindi po, hindi po natin nakuha lahat ma'am because of uh, the internet connectivity But uh, at least yung idea, yung, bu yung buong idea na kuha naman po. Salamat yes, po. Thank you so much, Ma'am Ngalug and Ma'am Jane. Salamat po sa inyong ishinir. Yan. So mga participants po, baka meron pa po tayong mga questions. Ala, bigla tayong dumadami. 60 na tayo bigla, Ma'am. <laughs> May mga katanungan pa po ba tayo? It's time for you na po to, ano, to consult. Uh, meron din po tayo mga kasamahan dito na TWC. So kung may mga questions po kayo, kahit hindi po uh, specifically dito sa qualitative, no, um, you can ask po right now. Just uh, ano lang po, raise your hand or just unmute yourself. No problem po tayo. Kaya yata kunti ang nagtatanong, Sir, ano, Sir Adiandro, kasi parang puro yata sila, ano, kwanti ang kanilang researches. Feeling ko nga, ma'am. <laughs> Hello, ma'am. Ayun, si uh, Sir Banoy. Go ahead po. Yes, so, uh, para po sa kwanti, sana. Uh, this is my first time na sumali sa ganitong ano, uh, workshop uh, regarding the research. Kaya uh, natutuwa ako na may ganito pong ano. And... First time and is, is zero, parang zero knowledge talaga. So, ang gusto ko sanang i-research is yung uh, implementation, yung level of implementation ng earthquake sa conducted face-to-face -face at saka yung sa conducted virtually. Ngayon, yung, yung problema ko dun sa ano, kung paano ko kukunin yung level of implementation dun sa face-to-face, uh, -face, eh, 
virtual naman po tayo ngayon. Kung paano po ano o based doon po ba sa ano dun sa reports last last uh, last year something ganun po. At gusto ko pong i i-compare kung i-compare yung dalawa kung uh, ano po yung uh, kung effective ba yung virtual parang ganun po Yeah, thank you so much Sir Romeo. Uh, may mga kasama po ba ako na ano TWC? Um I think yung sa akin po Sir Romeo, um you are geared towards um quantity talaga siya. Quantity kasi level of implementation. Now, the problem is um ano po ang source of data natin during yung sa face to face. Meron po ba tayong ginagamit na checklist on how to assess yung implementation ng earthquake drill? Yes, ma'am. May, meron pong evaluation form na after earthquake drill, uh, na nache-check po kung, kung outstanding mga ganoon po. Okay, sir. So, so, sir, meron kang data ng face-to-face. Um, -face. Yes, ma'am. Paano po natin kukolektahin yung data natin ng uh, virtual Ipapa sagot po ba natin yung yung checklist natin sa ating mga estudyante kaya uh, ang respondent ko sana dito ma'am is yung mga mga teachers ma'am and nan teaching sa sa school po um sir so yung Ipapa checklist sagot ko. yung checklist din po natin na ginamit natin ng face to face can still be used po ba sa ating virtual Yung iba lang po ma'am, hindi po lahat ay ay ano, ay tawag doon ay, ay pwedeng gamitin doon sa virtual kasi sa virtual ang ginagawan lang natin is the cover and hold. Uh, yun lang po parang yun lang ang parang ano niya ma'am. Sa sa virtual unlike doon sa face to face na na marami po yung kwan like yung magka-countdown ka ng mga tao kung meron bang naiwan, mga ganun. Okay. At saka yung sa uh, evacuation area, pupunta dun sa evacuation area, which is dun sa virtual, hindi po natin ginagawa po yun. Kaya yung sa checklist, parang uh, sa checklist po, parang merong mga hindi may apply po sa virtual, Sir, um, I don't know, uh, for, but for the others also, yung mga kasama ko po, um, pag hindi po pwede yung checklist, baka instead of, yung sir, sa face-to-face, -face, nakikita po ba ang ano, readiness? Yes, ma'am. Baka instead of um, level of implementation, baka mabaling na agir ta iti um disaster readiness no earthquake uh -oh. baka mas bas baka pwede siyang makuha sa face to face and so virtual. virtual kasi i think we are also naman experiencing earthquake so are the kids ready na pag nakaramdam sila ng ganito sa bahay man sa mall kahit wala sa school are they ready so maybe we can look into that po for our um quanti um, may I hear also an input from my ano kasama pong TWG kung pwede pong gamitin ni sir yung kanyang level of implementation kasi po ang problem ni sir is the checklist po sa face to face hindi siya pwedeng gamitin totally for the virtual or ma'am uh, meron po akong ibang ano uh, yung sa kung ano lang yung ginagawa doon sa face to face like yung yung duck cover in hold parang dun yun yung isang iniisip ko na mag-focus dun sa duck cover in hold uh, conducted face to face at saka dun sa virtually ma'am yun not the whole earthquake drill not the earthquake drills as a whole ma'am 
Yes, sir. So, pa na lang, ganito na lang siguro, sir. Um, sa school na lang siguro, tignan namin nila, Ma'am Maricel, yung ano mo, yung yung checklist na ginagamit mo and then tignan natin kung saan yung part na pwede nating gawin for your um, quantitative na study. Yes, ma'am. Okay po. Para makita natin, ang yung mabalin. Baka hindi siya level of implementation siguro. Ano nga particular part of the drill? Kaya yes, yun. Yun, po, yun. Yun na lang po siguro, sir, yung titignan natin. Yes, ma'am. Okay po. Salamat, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Any other input po? Go ahead po sa ating mga participants. It's time for you, you for us to ask po. Um, okay, so feeling ko wala na pong gusto magtanong. No? So mamaya po, uh, siguro may mga gusto pa rin magtanong pero sa breakout room na po natin i-consult. Um, pagpasok po natin this afternoon, you will be distributed po sa mga breakout rooms at um, uh, by then po may, meron na po kayong specific na TWC to consult na po yung mga outputs natin. Paki-prepare po yung mga output natin no. Tas kung may mga questions po tayo ay tatanungin po natin sa mga TWC available doon po sa breakout session natin mam mamayang hapon. So, uh, para po sa ating tanghalian Uh, wala po kami ibibigay na tanghalian, kaya <laughs> maaga na lang po tayo munang mag-lunch. Uh, Ma'am Jovi, okay na po ba tayo, Ma'am? Or do you still uh, have some something to to give to ano po to to say sa ating mga participants po? Yes, before sir. we um, go for break. Um before we go for break po, so we just remember po that in our title, tingnan po natin kung independent and dependent variable po yung asking title. We are geared towards quantity. And then, pag quali naman po, we can be more um, creative po in making our title. But be sure that when we make our title, kahit na creative po siya, dapat be sure that it should encapsulate the content of our research. And then, um, for the checking po of our output para hindi po tayo mahirapan at para hindi po mawala yung ating focus, we always include the interview guide for the qualitative and then for ating quantitative we include the survey kung survey po ang gagamitin natin para makita po natin na yung survey questionnaire natin ay naka-align sa ginawa nating specific questions po kasi pag minsan po hindi po siya naka-align kaya yung letter A kunwari sa survey question natin hindi siya yung number one doon sa ating specific question so yun lang po if there are other questions po um, later on po in the afternoon For the quali, um, we can consult po si Sir Sherwin, si Ma'am Jane. Um, sino pa po ba ang nagkakwali dito? Sila Ma'am Aglolo. Ayan, sila Ma'am Grace Payad. They are here po. Ayan. Um, Ma'am Loida is here po. Ma'am Loida. Sana mag-share si Ma'am Loida po sana about sa IT kung may gustong mag-aral po ng um, quali about the Indigenous Peoples Group. Ayan. So, wala yata si ma'am. So, thank you so much po for um, listening, for your cooperation po during our um, synchronous po. And then, please message us lang po if there are things that needs to be clarified. You can just message me po or anybody po from the technical working group. Maraming salamat po and happy lunch po. Thank you very much po, Ma'am Jovi Rose. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po for all the inputs and also for all the topics that you have discussed to us. Uh, at ngayon, ngayon po ay we're declaring lunch.